Worcester v. Georgia by Emma Joints. Background Information In the 1820s and 30s, Georgia conducted a relentless campaign to remove the Cherokee people from Georgia. In 1827, the Cherokees established a constitutional government. The Cherokees were not only restructuring their government, but also declaring to the American public that they were a sovereign nation that could not be removed without their consent. Georgia legislature responded by extending its jurisdiction over the Cherokees living in the state's declared boundaries. The state annexed the Cherokee lands, abolished their government, and established a process for seizing Cherokee land and distributing it to the state's white citizens. The Cherokees refused to move and instead filed with the U.S. Supreme Court an action challenging the constitutionality of Georgia's laws. The Cherokees argued that the laws violated their sovereign rights as a nation and illegally intruded into their treaty relationship with the United States. In Cherokee Nation v. Georgia in 1831, the court held that it did not have jurisdiction to strike down Georgia's laws. In a statement that would become particularly important in American Indian law, Chief Justice John Marshall wrote that the Cherokees constituted a domestic dependent nation that existed under the guardianship of the United States. The Origins of the Case Samuel Worcester, a native of Vermont, was a minister affiliated with the American Board of Commissioners for Foreign Missions. In 1827, the board sent Worcester to the Cherokee National Capital of New Dakota in Georgia. Upon his arrival, Worcester began working with the editor of the Cherokee Phoenix to translate the Bible and other materials into the Cherokee language. Over time, Worcester became a close friend of the Cherokee leaders and often advised them about their political and legal rights under the Constitution and federal Cherokee treaties. The Georgia government recognized that Worcester was influential in the Cherokee resistance movement and enacted a law that prohibited white people from residing within the Cherokee nation without permission from the state. Several missionaries, including Worcester, decided to challenge the law and refused to leave the state. On March 12, 1831, Georgia authorities arrested Worcester and several other missionaries for violating the new law. After posting bond, Worcester returned to New Dakota to take care of his wife and daughter, who was seriously ill. Understanding that the Georgia governor would continue to harass him, he left them and relocated to a new mission. At that point, he received word that his daughter had died. When he returned to New Dakota to console his wife, the Georgia guard arrested him again. In September, the missionaries were tried, convicted, and sentenced to four years in prison in Hard Lake. The Case The Missionaries represented by lawyers hired by the Cherokee Nation, appealed to the United States Supreme Court. In Worcester v. Georgia, the court struck down Georgia's laws. Speaking through Chief Justice John Marshall, the Supreme Court, with only one justice dissenting, ruled in favor of Worcester and the Cherokees. The court reasoned that the Cherokee Nation was a distinct community with self-government, in which the laws of Georgia had no force. Marshall explains that the government of the United States inherited from Great Britain the powers that the nation formerly held, including the sole power to deal with the Indian nations. He also states that the citizens of Georgia have no right to enter Cherokee land, but with the assent of the Cherokees themselves, or in conformity with treaties. The precedent set. The Cherokee nation hoped the decision would persuade the federal government to intervene against Georgia and end the talk of removal. Georgia ignored the Supreme Court's ruling refused to release the missionaries, and continued to press the federal government to remove the Cherokee. President Jackson did not enforce the decision against the state and instead called on the Cherokees to relocate or fall under Georgia's jurisdiction. In 1838, the U.S. Army entered the Cherokee Nation, forcibly gathered almost all of the Cherokees, and marched them to the Indian Territory in present-day Oklahoma in what became known as the Trail of Tears. Widespread criticism of Georgia's imprisonment of the missionaries prompted the state's new governor, Wilson Lumpkin, to encourage them to accept a pardon. Lumpkin persuaded the Georgia legislature to repeal the law the state had used to convict Worcester and the other missionaries. After intense pressure from the governor, the American board, and their lawyers, the missionaries gave up on the Cherokee campaign, accepted a pardon, and were released from prison in January 1833. In several decisions in the latter half of the 20th century, the Supreme Court revived Marshall's assertion that the Native American tribes possess an inherent form of national sovereignty and the right of self-determination. From that point forward, the Worcester decision became the Indian nation's most powerful weapon against state and local encroachments on tribal powers.